Good evening. Uh, good evening, everyone at Zoom. And hello to audience on Facebook Live. I'm Wawa Ramawati from University Tunku Abdul Rahman, the moderator for tonight talk. Well, it's happened, it has been seven weeks yeah, that we are with you talking about bamboo. So here we are, come to the end of this talk series with very interesting and quite different topics from the previous weeks. So welcome to Bamboo Talk Series Week 7 with the topic Bamboo for Civil Engineering and Construction. This talk series is organized by University Tunku Abdul Rahman, or known as Utah, and also PAM, Malaysia Institute of Architects, and MASA, Malaysia Architecture Students Alliance, also supported by Malaysian Bamboo Society. This talk series is organized in conjunction of the 2021 Architectural Design and Construction of Bamboo Malaysian Level Competition. So some bamboo experts from Malaysia and Indonesia are invited as the speakers. We hope it will inspire our students to produce amazing work for the competition. Let me explain briefly about the competition. It is international competition called 2021 Guangdong Hong Kong Macau Greater Bay Area Association of Southeast Asian Nation ASEAN International College Design and Construction Competition. The theme for this year, Yuan Yi, Chuan Tong Chi, yeah, or in English, originated from traditional techniques and art. Uh, so for students in Malaysia, you can get some design inspiration from the traditional art of Nusantara. So let's promote and bring our beautiful culture to China this time. This competition are open for all university students, not only architecture, but also art students, engineering students, and other fields. Hope you can represent Malaysia and bring the first uh, winner trophy this year. Not only you will receive thousands of ringgit, but your work will be built among other students' works from around the world at the Nansha Bird Park, Guangzhou, China. Uh, back to our talk, uh, our talk tonight, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, tonight's topic is quite different from the previous talks, which were mainly a bamboo architecture design. But tonight, we will discuss something which is probably not that familiar for people from architecture industry. For example, how to use bamboo as substructure for wet soil construction. And also we talk about the local empowerment to supply bamboo materials and innovation to solve the lack of skill labor for bamboo construction. For that, we are very grateful that there are two speakers to share with us tonight. Let's say hello to them. We have engineer Dr. Lau uh, Kao uh, Sai from Geobam Tile and Mr. Hua Jie Do from Shed Design. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. Uh, thank you for being us tonight. Uh, Dr. Lau was my senior colleague in Faculty of Engineering and Science, University Tunku Abdul Rahman. He is now retired from education but still active in industry. Uh, Dr. Lo, maybe you can say hello. How's life uh, as a free man now? <laughs> okay, maybe uh, Dr. Lo still mute. Okay. okay, well, maybe we can say hello to uh, Mr. Hua Jieto first, or I call him Jay, yeah? Uh, he, he's a young architect. Yeah, he just fell in love bamboo when I first met him quite a long time ago yeah Jay maybe it's about six years back yeah so Jay uh, how's your love story with bamboo over the years now <laughs> yeah has it been six years sir? Yeah. Uh, six years yeah time flies yeah so the love is going stronger <laughs> I'm happy to hear that so Dr. Law is here with us. Uh, so Dr. Law, I was asking you, how's your life now as a free man? Okay. 
he is still mute. Uh, you know, no, no. Uh, okay. Hi. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, now I'm concentrating on this, uh, and then I'm doing a lot of work for JGR, and they find my method very useful, really. And uh, so both the private sector, and later I'll share with you some quite amazing, uh, you surprise what bamboo can do. Uh, we, we, get, we actually can build a road and houses uh, uh, over swarm, you know, mangrove swarm, or even water. Later, I will show you the picture. We actually have done it on water as well. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so later, I mean, picture will speak, uh, speak better, better. And then okay. you see that. Uh, so that's why because of the usefulness, so you find that the uh, public sector and private sector find it very useful. Save time and save money. Okay. okay. Yes, yeah, so I think we are very excited to see that. Yeah, uh, Doctor Lo, I'm I'm so envy with you. Yeah, you are now free man. Okay. <laughs> I see. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, audience. Yeah. Uh, for this talk, yeah, we will start with uh Mr. J first. Yeah. Later, Doctor Lo will present his work, and then uh there will be a Q and A session. Okay, well, uh, let me introduce our first speaker, Mr. Huai Jieto from CF Design or SEAD Build. Build, yeah. So, uh, Huiji uh, is the head of design, head of design at uh, SEAD Build, yeah, specialist in this company, yeah, specialist in bamboo application for the building industry. So, CF Design and Build. Uh, seed design and build unique bamboo structures all over Malaysia from resort to private residence and even a pedestrian bridge in Kuala Lumpur. So seed is a full stack bamboo company yeah, taking, co uh, taking care of harvesting, treatment, manufacture and construction of bamboo. Uh, seed also makes an effort uh, in training harvesters in the rural areas, rural areas in Malaysia. They do some innovation to deal with the lack of special bamboo labor in Malaysia. So without further ado, let's listen to Jay Bamboo Works. Uh, Jay, the virtual stage is yours now. Thanks, Alva. Uh, yeah, also a big thank you to Pam and Masa for having me among this uh, panel of uh, very esteemed company. Uh, my name is Hichi, I, uh, or as Wawa calls me, Jay. Uh, I'm the head of design for Seed Build, and we're what we call a full service bamboo design and build firm. So when we say full service, it means that uh, we, we take care of everything from um, the harvesting down to the treatment, down to the manufacture, prefabrication, and also the design and build for uh, the, the build projects that we do. Um, so um, the obvious question for some of you would be, why bamboo? So some of you might know bamboo is the fastest growing woody plant in the world. Some of the fastest growing species of bamboo can grow up to one meter a day. And for the species that we use in construction, uh, they usually grow to their full length within 12 to 14 months. And then by five years time, they're ready for harvest uh, for use in construction. So in that five years, uh, the clump of bamboo that uh, you can see in this picture um, would have multiplied by up to 100 poles. So uh, it's a very special plant because if you harvest it systematically, uh, the bamboo not only doesn't get killed, but it gets uh, more and more healthy, it right? grows even, even better after you harvest. Um, and the great part about it is, unlike trees where once you cut the plant dies, um, bamboo stays alive and especially the root system uh, continues to uh, support, uh, uh, keep, the, keep the soil from eroding, uh, it, it keeps water in and also it creates uh, an environment for bio, my, my, micro bioorganisms to, to thrive. So all of that is good for the soil. Uh, recent research estimates that up to 50 tons of carbon dioxide is absorbed per hectare of bamboo per year. Um, so it makes it a very important agent for fighting climate change uh, in this century. 
Uh, some research also point to the fact that a similar stand of bamboo uh, absorbs 30% more carbon dioxide than a similar stand of trees, as well as producing 30% uh, more oxygen uh, than the similar stand of trees. So very, very, uh, all the good things. Um, and one of the reasons where uh, we really focus on bamboo is because uh, it has the ability to support uh, rural economies. It's something that we like to call pro poor because most of the bamboo in the world uh, grow in where the developing countries are. So our role as so-called stewards of uh, uh, this resource is to teach, um, teach these communities to make use of it sustainably and in the right way. So that rather than seeing it as a, as a pest or as a nuisance, they see it as a crop of value. So very quickly, some of the advantages of bamboo, um, it has an equivalent or even better strength to weight ratio to that of steel. Uh, it has an equivalent compressive strength to that of concrete. And uh, moreover, it has much lower embodied energy compared to concrete. And uh, another advantage is also bamboo can be harvested um, by hand rather than need it requiring um, they're rather than requiring uh, heavy industrial machines or, or vehicles. And so that also lessens the input of fossil fuel. Uh, compared to timber, uh, bamboo shows uh, very uh, excellent structural stability. Um, and also because it grows so fast, uh, bamboo is ready for harvest within four to five years and keeps producing Harvestable, clump, uh, harvestable poles in uh, every two years after that compared to a tree that at its fast quickest will take about 15 years to mature. So how do we, how do we start seed build? So the first collaboration um, uh, that I worked together with my business partner, Lucas, uh, was for this resort in Banting. Back then, Lucas was uh, running the resort and uh, one of the things he asked for was uh, a, a hall or a structure that could host small events um, while taking advantage of the view towards the, the very gorgeous ex mining lake and as well as show some of the, the, the beauty and also the qualities of bamboo. So our design took from uh, the, the oil palm trees that line the ex mining lake um, one of the challenges we gave ourselves was so that uh, we don't use any vertical structure members, uh, any vertical bamboo in this uh, in the entire structure. So you can see all the bamboo, they, they come up at an angle. And so that was the first project. Uh, since then, we've incorporated seed and starting from 20, just about 2017 onwards, um, we split our time between running uh, the design and build aspect of our, our company and also as an environmental consultancy. So last year in the middle of the pandemic, together with the help of Yayasan Hasana and also Prihatin, which is an organization under the Ministry of Finance, Malaysia, uh, we launched a program called Sustainable Bamboo Harvesting for Rural Empowerment. So the goal of this program is to use bamboo um, as a way to broaden the base of the economy pyramid. So what does that mean? We want to train and to empower uh, rural uh, communities who live near the bamboo, uh, where the bamboo are, to uh, develop tool, uh, to make use of tools and to develop their skill sets um, so that um, they're able to make use of, to harvest bamboo. And instead of uh, seeing it as something that you know, is uh, uh, something that is only good for burning. Uh, bamboo becomes uh, a source of their income. And not only that, um, through the program where we've been able to show that um, uh, their daily income can grow to uh, up, up to three, four, or even four, four. So last year, uh, through this program, we trained about um, 52 individuals. And this year, um, uh, we've been invited to uh, uh, to apply again for this the program, 
and God willing with the partnership of our investors, we want to scale this effort to um, more, many more parts of uh, Peninsula Malaysia. Um, and, and not only that, we are also trying to push bamboo upstream. Um, we are talking to companies and convincing them to consider switching the energy source to bamboo biomass as a renewable source of energy. Um, the last thing I want to mention at this point is uh, uh, hopefully at the end of this year, we'll also be starting a pilot project where we'll be using bamboo as uh, an agent to restore degraded mining, ex-mining lands in Terra. So if all goes well, uh, this will be happening. So on the design and build front, um, we do interiors, installations, and various uh, structures of various sizes uh, under construction. One of the things that um, we pride ourselves most is the fact that our team is uh, entirely homegrown. This has been one of uh, the most challenging as well as the most rewarding uh, part aspects of uh, running uh, a bamboo design and build in Malaysia. So you remember the first uh, project yeah. I showed you that resort in Banting. Uh, during that project, um, things were a breeze because uh, we had uh, uh, four Indonesian craftsmen and these were people who you know, grew up with bamboo, they knew how to work with bamboo, um, they knew what to expect from bamboo. So all you needed to, to get something done was just, just to tell them, okay, boleka, and then they would go, ah, bisa, bisa. And it was very easy because um, even when they get something wrong, uh, they'll just, uh, you, you can just point it out to them and then they're like, okay, they'll take it down and tomorrow they'll, they'll, put, uh, they'll put a new one up. So uh, once when we, when we started uh, CD, we knew that we, we couldn't, uh, it, it was against our philosophy to continually rely on um, in foreign skills, you know, as, as, uh, as excellent as their skills were, we knew we had to start a movement in, we had to start something in Malaysia. Uh, and we quickly realized that uh, the level of, bamboo craftsmanship in Malaysia is, um, is very low or rather very rare. There are very few bamboo craftsmen uh, and uh, it will be very difficult uh, to, to, I mean, how do you even start building bamboo? So we took it on ourselves um, to train uh, a local team. So these guys uh, from this picture, we've also grown since then. Um, they've been trained from harvesting to treatment and even to building. And I'm um, quite proud to say that more than half of our team uh, joined us with less than a year's experience in construction and even much less in their booth. So just to bring you through our training starts with um, uh, getting them to harvest and treat bamboo. Generally, our bamboo is treated by heat soaking with a boron salt solution. Um, the boron salt solution is actually safe for handling and also safe on the environment. In fact, it's only about one and a half times more toxic than regular tables. Some of the design principles that we employ uh, is very much the same design principles that are agreed upon uh, all around the world where people play with bamboo. So I've taken this slide from uh, our very good friend and mentor, Eugene of Tenten Design. Um, and Eugene runs, a, uh, Eugene was just with us, I think last week, he runs a, a blog called Better Bamboo Buildings, which has been a fantastic resource for us. Um, in fact, our entire design team has been through his designing Better Bamboo Buildings course and definitely recommend anyone who wants to find out more about bamboo to, to take a look. So very quickly, you've, you've, you've probably seen this before, the six principles uh, of preventive design for uh, bamboo buildings. One, make sure the bamboo is treated properly. Two, make sure the bamboo is uh, lifted off the ground and not um, uh, so that you won't get 
caught in standing water. Um, three, to uh, keep it away from direct sun and, uh, and rain. Uh, four, uh, to have make sure you have generous overhangs, make sure your bamboo are uh, protected and uh, uh, the roof is steep enough to sleep, uh, to sleep water away. Five, regularly check to and maintain the bamboo and also um, six, to design a way that the bamboo is properly ventilated so that dampness doesn't accumulate. So um, we know that bamboo is a, uh, is a traditional, uh, a lot of people would recognize it as a rural building material, but how do we make use of it uh, in an era where, I mean, in a, in a, in a country where uh, in Malaysia, where we don't have the, uh, the tradition of working with bamboo available to us. So some of the things that we've been trying um, is bamboo reinforced concrete. Uh, it's a, some of you may have maybe some experience or some knowledge about bamboo reinforced concrete, and you will know that there are many challenges uh, facing, uh, using, uh, facing the use of bamboo as a reinforcement in concrete. And the primary, the, the main two are probably, uh, one is the fact that uh, bamboo retains water and uh, allows water to move across the longitudinal uh, axis, um, which is not a good thing when, uh, when concrete is curing. The second thing is uh, bamboo uh, also has a limited bonding capacity with the concrete. And so it need, you need more bamboo uh, to replace uh, the amount of steel in reinforced concrete. But through our research and development and partnership with a local telco company, Iroko, um, on the right, you see actually the first commercial bamboo reinforced concrete plant in Malaysia. And so along with uh, the, what we've learned and along with uh, some of the, the, the processes that we adopted, we hope to build more of this uh, across Malaysia and make this perhaps even a mainstream uh, construction method. So yeah, I have some pictures here showing some of the joineries we've developed and I'll walk you through a few of them um, by talking about some of our projects. So this is a pedestrian bridge. Uh, it's indoors. Um, uh, you, the client was CHY Architects in Bangsa South. When uh, they approached us, um, while they were renovating their new office and told us that they wanted something um, that was a mix of a traditional bamboo construction and new materials and new uh, uh, technology. Um, they also wanted something that was an I something that could be a conversation starter in the office. So the concept is actually quite simple. Uh, it's what we call a hub and spoke. Uh, imagine you see over here, this looks sort of like a bicycle tire with the tire outside, the wheel outside, and then the, the spoke going through radially towards the center. So um, the philosophy, the, the concept behind it was uh, all of the load on this arch, which is the main structure member of the bridge, will be drawn towards the center of the bridge, the center of the arch, um, where the arch is actually the strongest. So to, to make, to create that, we had to develop a whole new technique that we call nail laminated bamboo, which is very much similar to what you see in the timber industry, uh, nail laminated timber. And this was a technique we had to develop in house because there was, there was no one in uh, Malaysia who, had done this at any scale. So the concept um, for this kind of structure is actually quite simple. Simply splitting bamboo into uh, splints and then nailing them in a cross formation. What this does is it actually increases the density of the bamboo by up to 60%. We also added metal straps. You see this, if you can follow my cursor, these black straps, um, which work to spread out the shear forces on the, the individual lamination. Connected to the metal strap, 
is actually this tension, this joinery that is able to turn longitudinal tension into radial compression. So what that means is um, if you were to put a bolt or a dowel into the bamboo at this point across, and then you put that, that bolt or dowel under tension, what happens is that the bamboo becomes very susceptible to splitting and cracking. So the, uh, the solution that we came, came up with, um, this joinery, it actually allows the tension to be brought down by the cables and then around the bamboo. So tension is now compression um, around the side of the bamboo. So we actually brought this, uh, this, this joinery to a testing facility and we found that each piece of each single member could take up to 445 kilos of tension. So almost half a ton. And the failure pattern that we noticed was actually not from the bamboo, but it was the cable that gave way first. So bamboo, you can tell that bamboo is really very strong. So altogether, there were 26 pieces of this, uh, this tension members around the bridge. So if you add that together, that's a hypothetical uh, load capacity of about 11 to 12 tons. This is the picture before we hand it over to the client. Next project, which is under construction, is uh, this rest house in Ipo. The client uh, managed to acquire a gorgeous piece of land with a lake in the middle and surrounded by limestone hills. Um, so he wanted uh, uh, a getaway that would reflect the tranquility of the site and also uh, allow him to take advantage of some of the scenery available. So what's interesting about this project is the structures, the frames that you see on the bottom right here were transported to site like this picture in the, in the top left. So uh, these, these, structure, these frames were coll collapsible and then delivered to site um, in something like this you see on the bottom left. So in long pole, so they can go, <clears throat> sorry, they can go straight up to uh, any lorry. And then once it reaches on site, it will be opened up and deployed. Uh, the whole structure can be carried by uh, the team of our workers, um, which is with, uh, without the use of a crane. And the installation is actually quite, in a sense, poetic. It's quite a quite a joy to watch because you see the, uh, you see every team member around here and then there's a conductor in the middle that uh, kind of guides everyone uh, how to shift the bamboo and to make sure it, uh, it gets set properly and then uh, uh, so that it's, it's installed sta stably. So this is a, I'm gonna play a short video of what happens when the bamboo gets deployed outside. So this was it, our bamboo model. Uh, before before work started, and this is a uh, recent progress. So um, there's a lot of, uh, this is so one of the things that we try uh, and do to um, make, to control our production by uh, prefabbing as much of our, our bamboo as possible so that when it gets to site, uh, we know that uh, we're, not, we're not liable to you know, any uh, errors on site. Uh, we can double, triple check the structures before they get sent on. And then when on site, the team know, already knows because they've been building it, they know 
what exactly needs to happen. And there's no, uh, well, not, not that there's no, but we minimize miscommunication on site. So it's uh, an approach that may not work for everyone, but I think for us is the is probably one of the the main ways we have to approach it, uh, given the the context in we have in Malaysia. So show you what we hope it will look like once it's done. Yeah, so there's a deck overlooking the lake and then a, a first floor for resting. And here the view opens up towards the lake. Stop here. So uh, that's all for my uh, from me. Um, my name is uh, Jay and uh, from, we're from Seedbuild. We're hoping to build bamboo for the future. We're always looking for people to collaborate with, people with interesting ideas, um, people who want to push bamboo forward. So um, do, get, do get in touch. And to the students, uh, all the best for your, uh, for your designs. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Uh a uh, very interesting uh, experience you share here actually i i do appreciate that you guys uh, sit uh, sit your company that um, put effort in in or uh, in tra uh, to train to train the local uh, to be the um, skill uh, bamboo bamboo craftsman Actually, uh, that's actually one of the biggest uh, issue in Malaysia in terms of bamboo construction. I believe we have so many archi talented architects uh, uh, who are able to design very beautiful building, but in terms of construction, uh, yeah, we have that issue that we still rely on foreign uh, foreign craftsmen. So I think it's very good effort. Uh, truly appreciate that. So I hope um, it will be continued. And um, and then more 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 uh, skill uh, uh, bamboo craftsmen in Malaysia. Okay, I, there are actually many questions already to, to you, but we uh, uh, audience uh, we need to keep uh, you you need to keep your question first. Yeah, you can write it in the chat room. Yeah, uh, we we will uh, Jay will answer it during the Q and A uh, session. Uh, so, once again, thank you, Jay. Just uh, uh, keep being here. Yeah, we will get back to you later to answer the questions. Uh, so, uh, uh, at once, uh, we go to the next speaker. Yeah, uh, this is also a very interesting topic that maybe if you are in architecture industry, maybe you never see this. Yeah, never know about this. But actually, he has been many years done many years ago yeah we actually we have very uh, uh, very uh, great bamboo expert yeah uh, we have engineer dr lao kaisai yeah from geobam tile yeah let me uh, explain about him yeah he has been a professional engineer over the past 30 years yeah he's also a fellow of institution of engineers malaysia a member of American Society of Civil Engineers and ASEAN Chartered Professional Engineer. After having received his uh, Bachelor of Science uh, and PhD degrees in civil engineering from University of Sunderland, UK, he worked in the UK uh, for a period of time before returning to Malaysia in 1986, where he assumed a myriad of a position in construction, consultancy, and research organization in both private, private and public sector alike, where he has acquired a wealth of engineering experience in excess of 40 years in a number of fields ranging from highway, structural to geotechnical, just to name a few. 
So in 1989, he attended a postdoctoral attachment uh, in the University of Oxford and Cambridge in England under the British Council uh, Fellowship Program. Thereafter, he continued with his engineering practice till 2006. In between, he has elected a member of International Who's Who Professionals USA in 2001. Membership-wise, he is a member of Standard Institution, Creativity and Innovation Associations, Senior Scientists Association, and Editor Reviewer, uh, Technical Expert, and Assessor, etc. in Malaysia. In 2006, he joined University Tunku Abdul Rahman uh, Utah as an academic with the appointment of associate professor to teach and conduct R&D with an aim to provide green, sustainable, and cost-effective solution for contemporary engineering problems. During his tenure, a number of master and PhD press graduates were successfully supervised. On publication, some 20 technical papers were published, while at least 11 national and international awards are accrued to date. Yeah? This is the greatest part. Yeah? He has created five patented inventions and a trademark product, with some of them being successfully commercialized. For example, bamboo grid uh, frame, geotextile system or geobomb tile that we will, we will talk about uh, later. Yeah, okay. Also scrap tires wall for earth retaining and have imparted some position, uh, positive contributions toward Malaysian construction industry and society in general. Wow. Such a long journey and wonderful experience, Dr. Lo. <laughs> yeah, salute you. Okay. Well, uh, I think everyone uh, here cannot wait to uh, to uh, to learn yeah, from uh, your innovation invention. So you may please start your presentation now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, start the video. Okay. Uh, hi. Oh, wow. uh, can I start Hello. the video show, slide show now? Yeah. Yeah. You can. Okay. You can share okay. your screen. Uh, okay. Yeah, so uh, my talk is Jobemta for uh, heavy civil engineering construction. Jobemta is my own coined word. It actually stands for, uh, we have a, later you will, you will see the picture, that we have a soil underneath, and then we have a soft soft soil underneath, and then supported on bamboo and above, and then separated by a geotextile as a separator. And then uh, we have over the last 25 years or so, uh, we have tried on numerous projects uh, from very heavy to heavy, uh, structures been built. In other words, like uh, we built on uh, soft, very soft ground, double story, without power eh, on rough, and also uh, like highway embankment, eight meter high. Eh? So as I say, it's a matter of construction over soft ground, known as I coined it as Jobem Town, uh, and then it's a well tried. I mean, uh, over the past twenty five years, uh, we had, I think we have uh, done more than fifty jobs, and then uh, very very fortunately. Uh, each and every one has recorded their success without uh, any repair or, or sort of maintenance or anything. Okay, so I, I emphasize the word ground treatment because uh, there's another another commonly method to deal with the soft ground is they call ground improvement method. In other words, to try to improve the the soft ground by expelling the expel and um, expel the water from the from the soft soil, and so that the soft soil eventually become stronger and then can support whatever that you build upon uh, with little or manageable uh, settlement. But my method later as I've shown, I, I don't bother with the, uh, to improve the ground because this time I'm support the weight of the construction, maybe embankment or maybe a, a houses, double story on a bamboo. And then uh, by spreading the load together with the flotation afforded by the bamboo. This is how it looked like in a, in a model form on the left-hand side. Uh, this is when we patent. And in fact, uh, I would love very much to have the uh, uh, mineral bottles, all these ways uh, in, in, the, in, in the system. Uh, because 
to, to, to increase the buoyancy because all the soft ground have one thing in common, all with a high water table. Okay? So, so if you have mineral bottle and then bamboo, the flotation will reduce the load uh, coming down from above. Okay? So on the on the right hand side, this is how it looked like in when in prototype. And this one is taken in the cyber gyre, if anyone can still remember the collab bridge there, uh, many years. Then uh, we 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 are not done nothing to do with the bridge, but we reinstate the the so-called the ramp, the, the 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 big ramp up to the interchange, in. and because the the ramp, uh, after following the collapse of the bridge, the PKNS find that the the, the ramp also uh, in bad shape. In other words, undu I mean up and down undulating because un beneath it is a is a soft soil pit. I think pit with clay. Eh? So and then uh, bottom just illustrate how the how the thing is done. Eh? So we have put uh, on the on the ground to support whatever the construction to build above later. Then we after that we put a uh, feedback field layer by layer, right? So this is how it look like in construction. This is what I mean by uh, Joe M Tao. You, you have you have the so called uh, a bamboo, uh, a bamboo in the middle. Joe textile as a separator on top, and the soft ground below. And what represent above is a this is a backfill, and subsequently this may act as a embankment for the road, or is a building platform to to for the house to build. And and, and, and believe me, underneath here uh, we have been trying on project where underneath is virtually is a slime is like water actually we have done in a, there is a manjong there actually we virtually later we show in the project picture we we actually built on water see, right so this is how the look in plan view uh plan view that mean uh, in plan view then we, we tie the bamboo together in the form and grid form and then here and then when the load if the load coming from above is not heavy we will resort to this uh, so-called uh, uh, non-woven uh, to textile uh, which is uh, cheaper right but if the load coming from above is is great say for instance like eight meter embankment and so on then we will we tend to use a high tensile uh, the woven to textile to com to compensate for the tensile strength to contribute some tensile strength to the bamboo system right so now uh, there are there are in during the design uh, there are two things to go about it i mean the bamboo spacing like like what you showed the previous garden is the spacing uh, the closer the spacing mean we we when we intend to carry heavier load you see then another way is to we have a multi tier one tier two tier or three tier because uh, uh, with this arrangement we can work, uh, we can in practice uh, support uh, uh, very very heavy load in fact in the when we in cyber gyre the job later we show you uh, the, 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 the the bridge the um, they had to have a machinery to lift the bridge beam which is 100 ton you see? so at first also uh, because we never designed for that load then uh, the, the consultant asked me whether they allow them to use uh, the, the the machine to lift the bridge beam i said if i don't allow you to use it you cannot build the bridge so finally the 100 ton which is beyond my design load and then went on on, on top of it and then uh, luckily then without a hitch uh, the thing still uh, uh, i mean the things can sustain even huh? okay now this is an actual highway project now this is a let's say we use two tier and uh, as i said they all call me only when the ground is soft when the ground is soft when the ground is not soft they won't call me so when it's soft so we have one layer or two layer or three layer depending on the load that impose for instance even highway first thing is the embankment height uh, that will decide the load of course static load and on top of that is the in service the dynamic load the vehicle uh, say for instance like uh, we have now doing the jgr job uh, road widening in clang in, in not port there where eighty percent or seventy percent of the of the of the vehicle there are all container, they are eighty ton. So when we come across this all a heavy load, we can decide either using two tier from design, two tier or three tier, right? So this is the actual we I I take him for actual job, you see. So of course, uh, roadside you have a roadside drain and thing like that. Then what I'm trying to show here is uh, is a separate treatment. I mean we we don't do one across. But depend on the roadside, the roadside uh, uh, facility like drain and roadside drain, etc. Then we have a separate treatment there, right? So 
Bamboo, uh, this, uh, we, we, we call it jaw bamboo. It's a ground treatment, not improvement method, and it's applied successfully in public and private sectors uh, uh, job in Malaysia since 1992. And heavy construction over deep soft subgrade than a pit. We, we have actually uh, go, go, go over most of the soft ground that we can find in Malaysia, like pit, river rhine, marine clay, mangrove swamp, ex mining slime, typically like the one in, in Sungai Bersi, uh, the, 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 the mine there. Actually, you're surprised, the mine golf course is ex mining slime. Is a made by the, uh, our forefather mine the tin and then they collect all the ex mining slime in one place, thinking that at that, at that time, not going to use it. But today, uh, with, with it being so strategically located, the, the, the land was used. Huh? So, uh, any ground treatment or improvement method for soft ground must restrain. So when it comes to construction on soft ground, you find that the common problem is post-construction settlement, right? There are two types. One is total. For, for example, like the KIA2, uh, uh, they want to due to the excessive total settlement. In other words, before the thing commissioned, the ground settled about more than a meter, more than a meter, right? And then the other type, which is more, uh, to me, more critical is the differential, meaning uh, you just consider any two, two spots, right? The, the settlement are uh, not even. Some settlement, I mean, even you're talking about soft ground, but they are not evenly soft. So the area that's softer than soft will tend to settle more than the one uh, let, 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 less uh, soft, right? So at the end of the day, you find that the settlement at the two spots it's not even. I'm sure you have come across in like coastal road, like between Tanjung Karang and Kuala Selangor. You find it uh, when you're with a car going up and down like 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 roller coaster, like roller coaster. So that is due to difference in settlement. And in the case of building, when you experience difference in settlement between the two columns, which usually can tolerate about say about an, an inch more than that, uh, the the column is in stress. Is been, been, been under stress. You see? So and then. The, the thing I, the, the system I designed at College of Amta rely on very simple, two simple principles. Minimize the applied stress by creating a large inexpensive area. In other words, for, for instance, you, 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 you find yourself walking in the soft ground that you support on your two little shoe area. Then you find that you are, you are sinking, right? Then you quickly pull a piece of plywood and stand on the plywood. Then you find it instantly, you won't, you either settle less or you sink less or you won't sink. Because the same same weight of yours now is distributed over a larger area provided, and then in our, as far as the pressure go, the pressure per unit area is small. So if when 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 the area is excessively large, in other words, instead of standing on one piece of plywood, you now this time you stand on hundred pieces of plywood, right? Then you find that the same weight of yours now is, is divided by over such a big area your pressure at any point is almost next to zero. So under such circumstances, you find that no matter how soft, even as soft as like near like water, a slime, you find that they can still support you eh? because the pressure coming down from you is so small on this time. Eh? So the other thing is I exploit the buoyancy effect of bamboo. Your bamboo, the specific gravity is 0.7 to 0.8. So it, I'm sure you have experience when you try to push a piece of bamboo uh, to, in, in the water, you, you can feel that there's up thrust against you. There's upward force against you. So, and this upward force, of course, in due course, will reduce the pressure uh, or, or the load coming from above. And this is highly desirable, you know, because the, the, lesser, the lesser the load from above, the lesser the settlement, right? So the, these are the two principles we bang on, right? Now, it's an effective stress distribution a very, very effective stress distribution. And then uh, another keyword is inexpensive. I mean, to create a large area for, for pressure, for, 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 for effective stress distribution is no diffi not difficult. I mean, uh, you just provide a big area, but uh, create it inexpensively by using bamboo. And moreover, the bamboo effort, another added advantage is the buoyancy, right? So weak soft subgrade can sustain. Uh, so in, in, in doing so, even the weak subgrade, the subgrade means the, the, the foundation soil can sustain the reduced load. And accordingly, the settlement, whether total or differential alike, will be mitigated. Okay? So, the, so that's why I said the real problem facing construction over soft ground. But you will examine the problem uh, very carefully. You find that the, the actual problem facing construction over soft ground 
is not the total amount of settlement. If should the total settlement take place within a short period of time, in other words, uh, before the completion of the construction, then you find that most of the settlement have already taken place, then there will never be a problem. The problem is this, uh, when you're involving soft ground, when you build something on it, and then you, and then you, you the, the thing settle, and as you do so, the water will be expelled. But the process is extremely uh, slow. You know? So in other highly time dependent. Give you an example. You know the Pisa Tower in Italy? But until today, the thing still sagging. I mean, the thing still moving, still sang it. Huh? So, so we have a similar one like in our Telo Intan, right? So in other words, over hundreds of years, the, 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 I mean, the movement, the settlement still carry on. Uh, that is a real problem. And that's why we engineers have the problem is how to reduce the post-construction settlement. I mean, we don't bother so much about pre-construction, during construction. If we take during construction, it never constitutes a problem. But it's only when the thing takes place slowly, little by little, and not evenly, after the construction, uh, that is a real problem. And that's, uh, as I say, a very good example is Pisa Tower, right? But how soon can it achieve? Uh, that is the real problem. I and mean, that's why in, in, in construction, uh, engineers have been trying very hard how to cut short the period uh, to allow the settlement to complete as much as possible uh, during the construction, leaving very little, if any, after the construction, right? So that's why uh, most authority like JKR, they, 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 they specify what is the expected or uh, I mean the, the settlement after construction over a period of time, say five years. And that's how they control the quality of the, of the construction, right? So you find that in practice, when you build directly over soft, soft grade, uh, uh, let's say you come to soft ground, you build directly on top, then you cannot avoid this problem. I mean, it's the so-called, the, 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 the soil will undergo primary consolidation little by little, over a long period of time. So therefore, we see this a problem. That's why I come along and using bamboo to the side. Instead of building direct, later I will show you, we interface the, the construction above and the soft subground below by a bamboo to the side frame, I mean, or the grid. Okay? So that uh, they, they act as a, to carry, to transfer the load to the bamboo rather than transfer the load to the soil. Okay? So uh, this is what I mean by later I show you uh, okay, so no, I mean, for uh, the, the real advantage of my method is and then uh, become so popular today because it's not a time dependency because you know that is a really problem facing the construction industry when construct over the soft ground, you know, uh, the, the settlement which we wanted to, to take place, but it take place over a long period of time. So now when we when we have a bamboo to textile uh, put in between the, cons I mean, the, say the construction, uh, let's say the house, or the embankment on top and the soft soft soil below, then you find that it will it will it will follow another uh, a set of rules, say complying to Newton's law. I mean, whenever whatever the load you put doesn't matter what's the magnitude, they want to constitute the action, and then the bamboo together with the soft soft soil below provide the reaction. Whenever the action and reaction at any moment of time, matter during construction, after construction, when action equal to reaction, the thing stop in equilibrium. Uh, this is uh, this is uh, the uh, the really advantage of the system, if like. Eh? So objectively, it rendered job and attractive. This is why uh, job and now is getting popular, right? Then from experience, the following can be realized: time saving, cost saving. Of course, this is something the the the, the construction industry most interested in: time saving and cost saving. You got time. In construction, it's been money, right? So, and then it's green, sustainable, right? As long forever we have sun and for forever we have soil, we always have bamboo, right? And then also, you can see now, I also use the industrial waste like the, the mineral bottles, the empty mineral bottle. In fact, I have a joint study with the UPM. Uh, I just recently supervised, uh, joined the supervised with a professor there. And then uh, the, it is, it's a student from Sudan. So, instead of using the, the, the mineral bottle, we, we collect all the rubber uh, waste uh, plastic bag and then compress them into bale and put in between the slot to, 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 to provide the buoyancy. Plastic is buoyancy and then also plastic, uh, very bad for environment because it's very lasting, but it's very good for civil engineering because it's long lasting, right? So that's why uh, now we are trying to use some waste plastic bag, compress them, and then put in between the put underneath the bamboo to create a buoyancy and also 
get rid of the, this industrial waste. Eh? And then and then another thing is many years ago I, I managed to uh, impress the then deputy finance minister to, to let me to go ahead with this with this method is I say in this method, uh, unlike many projects, they, 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 they don't give much social, I mean, benefit to the rural population around Asli, around Kampong. But in this case, when we use bamboo, actually, uh, orang Asli and orang Kampong are the one who harvest this, and then they, they they get direct benefit from this. And then, believe or not, over the year they'll be spending millions uh, buying bamboo millions because uh, each job, uh, we can involve more than hundred thousand pieces, if not more. Eh? Uh, very easily, we, even a small area, we use up about 100,000 pieces of uh, bamboo, each one about five meters. So in return, so there is, uh, I mean, the, the harvester, usually the kampong folks and the, and the orang asli, they, they get direct benefit. Uh. So, and then this method, uh, because they construct the Pen Borneo Highway, the then finance, I mean, the uh, Minister of Work, uh, so happened to be the same Minister of Work today, that uh, they, they start to start the Pen Borneo Highway. So, and then the time, there's no standard method. Uh, we still con uh, encounter problem of how to construct safely on the peat or organic soil in Malaysia. So they started uh, uh, through CIDB, uh, standardized or try to put together all the hate, how to we can construct successfully over the pit. Uh, uh, then I, I happen to be uh, in the committee and then they draw the, all the members from academic, research organization, from industry, it, it's a mixture, right? So we draw the this and my method, uh, fortunately happened to be also included in this, uh, in this guidebook. Really. So that's why uh, subsequently, uh, my met because the Ministry of Work accept it, you see. So this is JKR find it, uh, quite easily to 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 accept my methods subsequently, right? Uh, so of course, why construct soft ground is shortage of good ground, strong ground for construction. Eh? Like for example, a very good example is the Sungai Besi, the the mines. Uh. Those days when our forefather uh, mined the tin, they they don't mind collect all the slime, put it in one place, knowing very well that place was not suitable for construction because extremely soft, right? But of course today, what is not suitable in those what is Thinking they're not going to use in those days, today we we'll use up. You see, we have shortage of a, a good strong ground today, and then moreover, if they if they are strategically uh, located, I mean very well located, surely you, no matter how people try hard how to to do something about it, right? And then when and and when involving project involving very lengthy highway, it is almost impossible that you can avoid. Uh, maybe let's say over a hundred kilometer of a highway, maybe 10, 20 kilometer will be passing over. I mean, traversing over a very unsuitable ground, and they cannot they cannot change the route as they wish. Uh. They have no choice but to continue go through the background. So the, the now the question is how to construct uh, economically and safely over this area, right? So and then as I so I said before, uh, excessive, unceasing total or different settlement. These are the problem and prevailing ground improvement method. Uh, I, I mean, uh, other than our method. And whatever been uh, deployed now, uh, often find that they are very costly and time consuming. For example, there is surcharging. Very often you pass by an area, you see there, there are no men working on it for months, uh, believing, thinking that is the project is sick or whatever. Actually, they are surcharging. They are surcharging the thing. I mean, they just put the root there and, and, and leave it there. And then, uh, you know, after six months or so, they come back and resume. But a lot of local folks thinking that the project is either sick or what? Nobody attend to it, but the thing, uh, all the ops, all the cone is still put there. See? So, and then it's very time consuming. That's why time consuming. In fact, a lot of time I was uh, 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 given as an alternative. That means at first they go for the conventional method. Then they find the conventional method is very, especially the time, they kill them. You see? I mean, they, they try to do away with this uh, uh, idling time. I mean, just for surcharging. And that's why I was calling to substitute the, Conventional method, is it? So this method had met with the, and then conventional method had met with mixed success. Uh, I mean, I I wouldn't I wouldn't point out here, but they are, they are sometimes work, sometimes doesn't work, and then they are very costly. And as I say before, uh, thank God, I mean my method so far of all the job, uh, we we, we successfully accomplish it, is it? And then more effective because of that. So apparently the conventional method now we are using, uh. Need, uh, cannot 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 work very well. So more effective method need to be uh, devised. Eh? 
So this is this statement I drawn for my about uh, twenty five year experience. Eh? I I I I can humbly allow me to say that uh, because of we have tried so many, so we can we are we are in the position to say that we can support heavy to very heavy another eight meter embankment and then two story building uh, over pond uh, over the pond and over uh, without found without power or anything just sitting on bamboo rough underneath right so and then we have building platform embankment constructed very safely that means without attracting those uh, un undesirable effects eh? and then they can be constructed very quickly in fact i, I remember one time uh, uh, jkr uh, dg asked me uh, how, how good is my method you know when Tanyong Karang there because they're they're facing a problem of this surcharging i say uh, what 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 we are saying is when i finish my job in front your work building team follow behind without delay. Eh? So that's why finally they give the job to us. Eh? And then you know, soft to very soft. Soft in in in, in engineering term in SPT uh, zero or one two three four. These are the soft material. And then uh, and then the extend to get that today up to today, uh, we we have been uh, try our method in area where the SPT zero up to another very soft extend to forty meter. The one in Rasa, opposite the Sirim. Huh? So, so literally it's a very green and sustainable and reliable. Reliable because we have we have tried so many and uh, and we have been we make it. Uh, I mean, and yet it's very cost effective technology of Malaysia origin. Uh, we, we, we started it, eh? uh, then we innovate it, and then we invent it and we patent it and apply it in Malaysia. Eh? Okay now. It's an amphibious system. Later, I will show you. It's an amphibious system. I mean, we, well, now this okay. Now this ongoing project in JKR. Uh, this one is a bit uh, outdated. I mean, we are complete now. I mean, now they give an extra job on this is in KCT, uh, container terminal, not port. Uh. You can see the bamboo there. Can you see the bamboo there? Uh, and this one, you, uh, this road, this stretch of the road, uh, I reckon is the most heavily loaded load in the whole Malaysia because used by container. Everyone about 70 to 80 ton right 70 80 ton so uh, uh this is an ongoing job but they give it extra now uh, because they are very happy with the system so the the jkr decided to give it additional now to the this uh Jabatan Kura Baru, eh? right uh, this is what i mean by amphibious huh? so you see now this is in manjong huh? they say you see uh, this is manjong and then this is a uh, tidal this mangrove swamp i purposely show the picture you can see, you can see that now we put a platform there so we're going to continue here so when you've given this ground to us we we actually do no treatment no site preparation we build direct on top i mean uh, co conventional method usually say oh have to remove unsuit these are the unsuitable material we have to remove it and replace with a good material before we construct but the thing is uh in a uh, say is easy but when it comes to practice, uh, you want to remove the unsuitable material and to replace, first of all, it's very difficult, very, I mean, very awkward, and also very time consuming, and therefore very extremely costly. And then moreover, not accessible. Not many machines, even the lightest construction machine can access. So our method, the moment we lay, we can have a heavy machinery, maybe excavator, bulldozer can be work on top of it. So uh, many times uh, the main contractor very worried because he's worried about his machinery. Yeah, how can you make my machine standing on here and work with him? So, but I say if the area is big enough, the buoyancy uh, that generate is great enough. Uh, the heavy machinery divided by the big area, the pressure so small, it stands. So here it's tighter. Whether the tide come or the tide go, we continue to work. It's not affected by the tide. Right? Uh, this is what I mean by. Uh, on 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 water and this one we built on 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 land and this one is the longest project I try in Miri, uh, 167 acre and now it's about 25 years and uh, never never a single inch deep problem uh, underneath is a pit or soft pit right? uh, there, there there you are now you we actually we virtually build on water here is again uh, very near to Manjong uh, this is one is in the uh, Tolobate yeah so the uh, under the JPS. Uh, they want to rehouse uh, the, the Narayan, uh, the Narayan, Pekampongan Narayan. So they reclaim from the sea. See? So they put a a a, 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 bat, uh, a bun, and then they try to uh, uh, reclaim this area. Then they, 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 the method, original method is uh, excavate the, all the ex, ex, um, marine clay, soft marine clay underneath and replay with the sand. See? 
but uh, the, 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 the estimation is out because the sand keep backfill and then the embankment never rise up. See? So finally, they cause in and then to get the embank to get the building platform done. So we actually, you can see that we actually built on water. So my contention is you can build on water, soft ground, uh, we can manage, uh, sure we can manage. Eh? So we can do uh, even for reclamation, reclamation, right? And then, so this uh, another uh, another some of the other pictures that you to show that we do on on ground and also on a very awkward ground. Right? Uh, this is a very interesting project. This one was PKNS job uh, in Rasa Rasa opposite Sirim, where where you see originally they use pow eh? where they they pow the thing SPD zero up to forty meter. So when they pow the thing never set the thing never set. So if they continue, the cost overrun. They cannot sell the property. They cannot sell the property. So they, they stop the job for about a year or, or more. Then uh, looking for whether any chance to revive the project later. Because if we continue, they cannot sell the property. Too expensive. So finally, because we are working with them in their, their, their collab bridge in the cyber gyre. So they, they call us and see whether we can offer any solution to revive the project. So this is how, when the project first given to us, this is what it looked like. So whatever the power we power, we leave it there. We, we just use it up and we, we, we use it, of course. Then the rest, not power, we just put a, a bamboo raft underneath. And not to forget, the floor of the building also is a, is a raft. The building footprint is a raft. So you have raft upon raft. So at the end of the day, although the SPD is around 40 meter, we, we, we get away. Uh, today, now it's always selling, the property selling. So. Uh, we get away without any piling, uh, uh, just sitting on the, on a bamboo raft. Uh, while the floor of the building, the floor of the building, is a raft, and then the underneath is a giant uh, uh, bamboo raft, uh, cover the whole different area, so to protect even the road, the the long gang and so on and so forth. Uh. So uh, this one just show that we have been where we have been. Uh, these are the actual site project. Uh, these are the project program. Not not I take anywhere. So this one is in Miri Supply Bay. That my very first project. Uh. This one is Sungai Besi. Can you imagine now you go and uh, have a chance to to visit the golf course there? The golf course is built above. Uh, you just put a bamboo Joe textile on top, and then a a, a, a thin field of a five hundred mm. Then bulldozer on top. And, and, and start building the platform. So even until today, it's least expected that you are actually sitting on the, on the, on the golf course, but below it actually is this sort of stuff, huh? the X mining slime. So these are the man mangrove swarm, mangrove swarm. And then because we have tried successfully in Manjong, Jiegi Agi another job in in, in Red Langkawi lah, huh? uh, So this is a percantikan this uh, Sungai Melaka. So Sungai Melaka. They, they want to protect this uh, this uh, ship power. See? So they, they, they underneath is a very, very soft uh, river, river line clay. See? So they, 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 they want to build a rock armor to protect it. They keep throwing the rock underneath. The rock keep disappeared. See? Finally, they call in to, to have this building, to, to have this, and then they lay the, the rock uh, nicely. Uh, then slowly the thing settled to the bottom and very quickly, they build the, the rock armor, right? So this is a, another area we, we build on waters. In fact, we just complete one for MK land. Actually, it's a lake. Uh, it's a lake. Uh, it's a lake. So you can see, you can see here that we actually build on water, right? And this is river in, in Batu Pahat. Uh, see? So the, this is a uh, Batu Pahat and near uh, Dama Minyak there. The, there is a wholesale market. Then the consultant worry uh, uh, when, 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 when the thing in, in service, then the heavy truck brought all the goods in, will push the soil into the river. So in this job, we do two things. Like, we just stabilize this part so that uh, to prevent the, the soil being pushed into the river. Secondly, we suggest to JPS, we beautify the river line. Finally, we use tire wall. It's another invention of ours. We use a tire wall here, put a tire wall. So a, a good river, um, a very nice profile. So, uh. so uh, this one is the oldest project we have in in, in, in uh, this uh, Miri, uh, Miri. So uh, this one, uh, is it construction over soft ground? Uh, at the onset, at the onset, before start the construction proper, uh, these are the problem. Uh, I've seen many of these, I've seen a few times, happen in front of my eyes. Eh? So when this happened, uh, uh, very often it's better to leave the machine, go down uh, to rest in peace. Uh, rather, the, it's more expensive to take it out than, 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 to, than to do something. Eh? So this one is in Chogum. Uh, 
you know, after you're passing Sungai Besito, the Chogum there, they, they have a car park. Last time they have an exhibition here, right? The car park here. But they fail to build the car park because every time the excavator is X mining again, similar to the, because they are not far away from the, the, the mine. Huh? Actually, it's X mining slime also. So the moment excavator excavate, all the soft slime um, ooze out. Really. So, so when you consult a soft ground, they can endanger your machine, endanger your personnel. Really, right? So uh, this is during the construction. Uh, this one I'm hand on. Is it? This one in 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 in, in uh, this uh, near uh, Bukit Merah there, uh, the, the the Lake Town, the Lake Town there. So the the the, the North South Express this is a part of the North South Express during construction. So this North South Express cut the paddy. I mean one big piece of paddy field into two half on on either side. I mean divide the paddy field into two. So in the middle up to two two and a half meter or so, suddenly the whole thing break up is it because of the uh, the differential settlement on both sides. So we leave a gear. And then this is usually where the contractors suffer. Uh, maybe time or maybe money. Uh, this is another, this is uh, this is a North South Express. Uh, so uh, so after that, we do repairs. Uh, this is where they usually the, the, the contractor caught uh, and making money and then losing money. Right? So, uh, and then differential system, okay now. You see, when, when, when you have the embankment on the soft ground, one of the methods they use is a power embankment. They, have, they build the embankment sitting on the on, on, on the concrete slab and then the concrete slab sit on power. Although the thing the, the this this uh, highway doesn't settle but you see the the the, the thing uh, between the power the ground settle so so big that you can see through from here and from one end you can see to another end you see? so we are calling and then to to rehabilitate the thing and and this is a total settlement and this is differential settlement and this is extremely dangerous right to the to the to the motorcyclist uh, come in a high speed come in you know I mean uh, these are called differential settlement usually occur and prove to be not only inconvenient not only comfortable not comfortable but more more dangerous very dangerous right and many times uh, this I uh, mean mishap happen huh so these are differential settlement uh, okay now when it happen in the house you see this city alarm uh, the in near the uh, the, the the clan, the clan, the shalom there. Uh, the, the GM told me, and uh, this is a kind of problem. When you have the house sitting on the pile, while the house doesn't settle, yes, fair enough, the house doesn't settle because the, the column is sitting on, 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 on the on the pile. But the apron, and this is very hard to rectify this problem because uh, when you when you try to cover it up, then because you put weight on top, then it go down again. The thing keep recurring, keep recurring. Uh, never stop. Eh? Uh, this is a good example. Uh, I mean, this show you that after 100 years, this is the thing because the, although the ground underneath is soft, the load may be the same, but they are not evenly soft. So the parts softer tend to set, settle more. So this is a differential settlement. And this one also in Sarikela. Uh. So when this happened, the, uh, the people abandoned the house. Uh. This is our own version of Pisa Tower. Okay? Now, so the design philosophy is the a floating road on the soft ground, including pit in its simpler form, is a road that construct direct on top of the soft soil, relying very little. That means we don't care how soft the soil, including its like slime. Then because we don't rely on the strength, so we don't rely, we rely on the bamboo to support, right? So the construction is actually the concept is float on the soft soil foundation to enable equilibrium. Whenever the when but whatever the load you put, the thing will go down, but they'll go down to the to an extent that in equilibrium. When the equilibrium is, is set up, I mean action and reaction equal, it will stop. And then this then take place very fast. And this is the real advantage of this system, if you like. You know, it means uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it may go down a lot because soft ground. But the thing is, whenever equilibrium reach and which is reached very fast, then the thing stop, right? Uh, so and then especially when you con during construction, you engage heavy, very heavy construction vehicles, forty ton, all this, and all the all the lorry carry all the heavy uh, uh, material like soil or this. Then after the construction, when the road open, the thing is only to the light traffic. You want the the, the bamboo underneath the soil already experienced substantial load during construction, will not experience, will not feel anything in the post construction, and that's why post construction settlement. Uh, after we am employing this adjustment method, usually is controllable. I mean, within the allowable limit, and that's why the method away uh, uh, is so called uh, advantageous in that sense. Uh, uh. So my contention is, 
if we can build, let's say this is a Mekong River, we can we can this is virtually float float the thing, float the thing on the river on, on the water. Now let's say again, okay. Now you have the boys. If this is akin akin to my system, you see, we have the bamboo which is a, a flotation, and then the bamboo can bend without breaking. Now, so now if I have a structure like this, can I put an embankment across? Can even even for that matter, if my sampan provide the buoyancy and then the thing bend without breaking, I can actually build an earth embankment. I can build a road over the over the river, over the river, right? So, okay, the method and the and the and the, and the, and the principle of working, we create a large but inexpensive. Uh, that is our selling point. In other words, uh, create a large is no scale. Anyone can create a large area, but inexpensively. Uh, and then, moreover, I find that bamboo is almost indispensable because uh, not many material on earth, uh, they have a buoyancy, uh, buoyancy, right? So, and then they, in, the, in this application, the buoyancy is very useful, right? And inexpensive, large area, and also give rise to another advantage, buoyancy. And then, and because of this, at the end, we can afford to have a very efficient road spreading. Just like you stand on your shoe, you, you stand in the soft ground on your shoe, your shoe area very small. Right now, if if imagine your shoe by magic can enlarge your shoe one thousand times, right? One thousand times. Now your shoe suddenly becomes so big. So your same load now is spreading over a large area. Then the the, the, mean the load per unit area of the pressure is very small, and because it's small, that's why no matter how weak the soil underneath, they can bear your load. Right? The bearing capacity is sufficient to carry your load. So in this sense, we minimize the stress. In other words, if you stand on your on your shoe, your shoe, your, your stress is very high because there's the shoe area very small. Your load divided by a small area, your pressure very high. But you stand on a bamboo, a bamboo frame, very large bamboo frame, the area now is increased. Your load the same, the design load the same. So the pressure everywhere is small, and that's why not, not supposed to be able to sustain by the soil below. When you first stand on your shoe, now it can be sustained by the by the by the by the big soil underneath when you are now standing on a plywood, right? So consequently you minimize the soil display because of how much the soil moves or the displays proportional to the pressure, right? Proper pressure. So if you somehow can reduce the pressure, and so is the soil displacement produced, right? So so now uh, if I mention this. It's very established. Nobody will quibble or buoyancy principle for our community principle. Nobody will quibble. It's very established principle and uh, nothing, nothing uh, so called sophisticated. Right? And then road reduction by providing a big area, that means stress minimization. Again, this is very straightforward. So you find that this method depends on very rudimentary method and very fundamental principle. Right? So now, uh, in fact, engineer over the years uh, have been doing this knowingly, not knowingly. Okay, you have a column. Why you have a pet footing? Actually, the pet is to enlarge. Just like you you first stand on your shoe. Now you put a piece of plywood. Now so that the the, the, the area increase, so the pressure the pressure decrease. When the pressure decrease, the soil underneath that is weak, that it can sustain. I mean, if you like this. The soil too high, the, the, the pressure coming down too high, the bear, it cannot bear. But when you have this, the pressure is reduced, then the soil now can bear. If the soil is weak or the load coming down is a bit too, still too high, why not you join the two pad and form into what you call strip? Okay, if the strip is still joining two pad together from a strip, is still too uh too too weak or too, too small the area or too high for the for the load applied, why not you join many strips together? Or form into a raft. Actually, you can visualize the a raft thing, which is the building footprint or the floor of your of, of your of, of your building. The floor of your building, you can look upon it as it, it consists of many pets put together. I mean, you can put thousand pets together, then you form a raft. Now, this is where usually the engineer ends. But I come along and extend further. I say, why not? I cover the entire, not just only under the building footprint. I cover the entire development area, including outside the building, right? With uh, the bamboo. Then I come up with a super raft. See? Right, excuse this me, uh, Doctor Lo. Ah, uh, I think. Uh, <laughs> no, okay, I, I, I go <laughs> to I go, I, I, I go to the I go to the okay. Uh, very quickly, huh? So if the area yeah. very large, then the pressure is small. Uh, I won't go into this. I go into uh, 
Uh, so a uh, buoyancy understood. Uh, so load spreading, load reduction, load spreading by create a large area, and, and load reduction by due to buoyancy. That means they up trust, right? I I just I just show you all the all the past year projects, uh, past year project. Uh. Uh, so and then okay, if JKR very particular. JKR they have a research unit, so they want us to prove to them how much the load carried by the bamboo, how much the load carried by the soil, and how much carried by the water underneath. Eh? So that's how we instrument the thing. We put strain gauges on the bamboo, and then uh, uh, these are the, the instrument. So when when after the after we we we, we construct the thing, then we allow the load to go past, and then this thing tell tell they send a signal out, and which is pre calibrated. Then we can tell exactly what is the load induced in the bamboo, induced in the soil, and induced in the water. And then from our study, from our, our instrument study, 99% is sustained by the bamboo and about 1% uh, con contribute by the soil. In other words, this is a, is a welcome sign. You know? We don't want the load to be passed to the soil. When you pass the soil, the soil will settle. Right? When, the, when the bamboo is carried the load, then they prevent the soil from settling. Right? So now, so these are some of the instruments we, we, we have uh, at the site. Very interesting. Uh, and, you know, I mean, uh, we attract a lot of JK engineers come and, come and look at the thing. So we put all the gadgets uh, uh, study the, uh, to study the behavior. So not, not, not just theory. We actually measure what is actually induced, right? In the bamboo and in the soil and in the water. So these are the past project very quickly. Huh? So this is a longer. Can you imagine now we build direct, you know, we, we do nothing. We didn't improve the ground, we build direct. So uh, this is the, uh, the oldest project I have in Mary. So can you imagine 167 acres huh? all built like that? Oh, it's a phenomenal. The whole area, right? We almost utilize up, use up all the, the time the bamboo in Sarawak at the time, right? Okay. And then you see the, the beauty, even we come over the uh, a local, a local some water, water, water pond, we, 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 we ignore it. We just bamboo cover. We don't even backfill. We don't even backfill and close up this one. We just allow the cross. And until today, nothing happened, right? Uh, so anyway, so this is after completion. Uh, and then after 20 years, uh, the performance fantastic. Uh, after 25 years, right? So uh, if, if, if we, we, we thought if do nothing, then the, the settlement will be about 300 mm. But we do something, it's about 100, 180 or so. But actually we measure only two inch uh, after eight years, right? So uh, this is a Sungai Bersi, you see. Huh? Okay, now you, can, you started with like this, uh, x smiling slant, then you put bamboo, then you put your textile, you put backfill, and bulldozer on top start working. Can you imagine bulldozer, below the bulldozer, this stuff, this stuff, right? Uh, this is uh, this is what I mean. Huh? So this is a uh, Sungai Melaka. Lah. And then uh, this is how we do the Sungai Melaka, Pachantekan Sungai Melaka. Huh? Uh, right? Uh, time shortage. And then uh, this one will slowly sink down underneath. Uh, I, I brought JPS there a few times. I tell them you have to imagine a bit. The one is underneath. Huh? You cannot see the underneath. Right? And then this project is in Westport. Huh? It's a Malay reserve land. It is a... Uh, then. Uh, a pit again, we, we build direct. So, you can you imagine? We, we, we given this ground, we build direct on top, right? Build direct on top. And then, after many years, nothing happened. In fact, it is job uh, impressed the PKNS uh, structure, uh, a structure chief, and then finally give me the PKNS, I mean, the cyber giant job. Really. Okay, this one is uh, now the uh, what do you call it? The Batupaha job. Uh, Batupaha job then. You see, very soft uh, river, river, river clay, river line clay, right? Then you see the so soft, the men have to stand on the pipe, you see. But after we put the first layer, excavator is going up and down. This uh, engineer is very, very accelerated. You see? Oh, is it fantastic? <laughs> uh, uh, so this is how we look at our plan view. Huh? So in this job, we do two things. We have a tire wall to line the river, to line the, so they, and then gain land, gain extra land. land huh? So they can, uh, uh, at night can have some kind of activity at night. Huh? So, you see, this is how we do the uh, protect the, the soft ground. Huh? Uh, this is uh, this is what look like today. Lah. Can you see? Now the, 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 the line, the river line, very nice. Lah. Uh, then this part, we use bamboo. Here we use tire wall. Right? Uh, this is, uh, so, uh, I mean, the, I've shown it. Uh, this is what today already. Uh, this is uh, the one, uh, one collab bridge eh, in, in Cyber Jaya. Uh, the collab bridge. Uh, so this is during construction. Uh, during construction. Uh, then uh, the LLM asked me how to how to prevent 
a divergent settlement between the, the, the joint there. So I, I tie the bamboo to there, to the starter bar, and so that there's no drop there, right? Uh, this is what look like today. Huh? And then after the thing very successful, they are so happy, they give me over the second package is a silk road. The silk road, the four silk road. And then eco centuries worry about the gazebo, huh, which is their land, they have their landmark. Huh? Sangat is it? because they say very heavy. Huh? So uh, again, they use bamboo. Huh? Uh, this is one of the cotton uh, China company in, in Joho, a cotton wool with container where we bring in the raw material. So again, it's soft ground underneath. Right? So uh, this is a mangrove swamp in, in Manjong. Huh? Uh, can you imagine that? Yeah. My, my contention is uh, for, for all listeners, hey, if I can do on this, uh, this sort of, uh, can look at this photo, what sort of ground I cannot, I cannot put, I cannot uh, do. I mean, uh, this is virtually almost uh, inaccessible. Right? And then the moment you put a uh, bamboo, bamboo jaw textile and put the top layer, then off you go, right? So uh, more picture on this uh, mangrove swamp. Uh, then uh, this is a uh, uh, 14 acre uh, prima prima housing. Uh, later on, they're going to support uh, 20 story in the mixed development, right? And then here they put about, they allow 40 settlement plate to monitor the settlement and uh, we get a lot of good result, right? So this is uh, during construction. Uh, so this after the success there, JPS invites us nearby in Telubate to reclaim the land for the Nelayan. Uh, so we get a lot of recognition. Uh, uh. After the success there, JPS R and D, and then we do R and D also with uh, even the uh, uh, university at the Naga uh, join with joint study with the final year. Uh, these are some of the things we do in the lab uh, to simulate uh, the one in the site, right? So and then. So uh, we also, uh, some of the project project personnel uh, register as a PhD or master. Eh? Huh? I, I have uh, one, one or two, um, the project director himself register for the PhD uh, uh, using the project. Without, without, without go to university, there may no residence required, but using the project itself, right? So it's an innovative R&D me uh, method of Malaysia origin. Huh? And then a simple method, you can see very simple. Uh, you can see, you know, for half an hour, you grab it. Already. It's a green sustainable and bring financial benefit uh, to the rural folks. Huh? And then based on simple, but nevertheless, very established principle. Huh? And then, uh, and then we, we do rely on the That's why we can afford to build no matter how awkward, how bad the ground is because we do rely on the strength of the ensued soil for support, right? The bamboo will bend, the bamboo will bend to whatever extent and to support the load, right? So the construction is actually concept wide is floated on the soft, soft soil. Uh, when one time the bamboo tree is going to enable an equilibrium, that means compliant to Newton's law, compliant to Newton's law. And then we have over the year, we have developed a sound Mathematical theory, uh, uh, Hitanyi Bill and Lexi Foundation, Wingler model, Wasrop Postanic, uh, 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 final element to analyze the thing. Uh, uh. And then uh, these are the advantage very innovative, very simple, very effective, trouble free, environment friendly, and, and, and uh, it's of Malaysia origin and substantial. This is what the most important uh, project cost and time saving. Uh, because ease of construct, very easy to construct and very little if any such preparation we we more or less like Julius Caesar we came we saw we conquer no 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 such preparation right and uh, uh, so far uh, very little if any construction problem right because the thing is so simple right and no surcharging no idling and very experienced and avoid and I mean if you are an uh, the uncertainty about estimate the quantity to to replace the unsuitable material. We, we do we don't we don't we don't have that problem, right? And minimal or no maintenance. Uh, this is important because a lot of people thought end of the project that is a total cost. Not true. Not unless they got no repair cost or maintenance cost. So I was on. Uh, so far I I went to so many jobs. I I never have a problem of people you know call us and for maintenance and 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 repair right. So and then again significant economic to the to the government and all this uh, uh, And then as a country we consider bamboo reserve the advantage can be reaped should this method be widely used. Uh, unlike the construction over the soft ground which is geotechnical, whereas uncontrollable long-term settlement. Here, we don't have this problem. And Joe Bemta is a soil structural interaction problem. And because of that, then we don't uh, trap into the old method where settlement like 
the pizza tower. In other words, should pizza tower built upon our method? Today, there's no pizza tower, right? It will be still vertical, right? Okay, so I learned with that. Uh, sorry, that was my idea one. Uh. Sorry, sorry. Okay, so thank you for your attention and uh, your time. Uh, now I, I open to the floor. Any any uh, question? Uh, thank you, thank you, Dr. Lo. Uh, like you said, it is a, a simple technology, but uh. actually, it is extraordinary. <laughs> uh. Yeah, it's a uh, uh, it's just like a bamboo rough uh, system, yeah, but not only float on water. But also uh, float on soil, yeah. Uh, and then you have done it for since 1992, yeah. It's, it, it, I was just uh, joined architecture uh, degree that time, yeah, 1992. So, so we can get Asia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, uh, what is interesting here? Interesting fact, maybe for uh, uh, my my colleague, my friends here from architecture industry, yeah, it's, it's quite contradicted with uh, bamboo building construction that we in Baldur in for bamboo building construction, we want to uh, lift uh, lift off the bamboo uh, from the ground, yeah. But oh. in uh, your system, you are put it on the ground, even under the ground. Yeah, oh. it's quite interesting. I think there are many curious. Uh, questions. Uh, uh, yeah, Ms. I can see. Miss Wawa, Miss because uh, yeah. today we are not intend to. The, actually, I I have you know American uh, have done their uh, whole building in the naval base in California. Whole yeah. building, uh, beam, column, all reinforced by bamboo. No steel, no steel. Okay. Huh? Okay. Yeah. 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 So 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 in other words, if I I I have another, I have another sort of a session. Uh, I have another that where I I use uh, this. Uh, uh, I have done in my university Utah there. Uh, the first floor floor first uh, the model house there. The first floor, all reinforced by bamboo. Until today, I ask my student to test it ten times the design look. The thing still stand there. Today is still yeah. there. Uh, in 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 the old, old campus there. Oh okay. Uh, so, <laughs> so actually, I I I I'm very uh, I'm very uh, keen to uh, not just only now to reinforce the soft soil. You can use a structure. There, uh, there's another zoom on zoom. I have me. Uh, uh, excuse me. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, I think uh we start our Q and A session. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, we start with question uh, given to Jay because I think uh, uh, it had this this question is already uh, given much earlier yeah uh, uh, there is a yes. question from uh, Mr. Chin Min yeah to Jay yeah may I know how did you get the bamboo buildings approved by authority and built yeah and what were the difficulties you faced? Okay, Jay, maybe you can uh, share your experience in design and build uh, bamboo buildings uh, in Malaysia regarding uh, approval from the authority. Authority. Yes, um, Jay, are you still there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Got a question. Wawa and Jimmy. Yeah, so with the authority, um, it's, it's difficult because uh, Naturally, our UBBL is quite uh, restrictive in what it, what we can, uh, what materials we can use for building. Um, so, our uh, our author authority are uh, very very often we we put it uh, we put it under uh, temporary structures. But oh, okay. um, at this current moment, we do have uh, uh, a residential project in Pahang going into submission. So far, the response from the authorities have been, the, the local council has been quite positive. They haven't been giving a lot of resistance. Uh, uh, and we're hoping that that project can be uh, one of the, uh, the, the first few uh, in, the, in Malaysia. Um, aside from that, we are very aware of uh, some of the challenges um, getting it approved. So that's why a lot of our projects you see there, we're focusing on interiors, uh, guest houses, uh, stuff that we can sort of uh, get by without uh, a formal approval. Mm, I see. So is this? Uh, there is still a challenge in the in getting the 
authority approval yeah okay thank you jay uh, let's go to the next uh, questions uh, Okay, actually, there is a question from uh, Mac Chang. Yeah, in terms of course, yeah, is it competitive with conventional method, Jay? Bamboo, uh, bamboo uh, construction and uh, conventional building. Yeah, um, we, we aim to price ourselves uh, e equivalent, if not lower than conventional material. But I think, having said that, I, I must put a qualifier that. Um, we must compare apples to apples. Uh. So when you're uh, when you want a uh, a bamboo building, I assume most people don't want just four walls uh, and uh, you know a basic uh, uh, roof over your head. You want something that makes a statement. Uh, you want something that uh, is in line with some of uh, your own uh, character, your own philosophy, uh, and you want to. I mean, some of the people who will go for a bamboo building naturally want it to look like a bamboo house. So um, if you compare to, say, like a standard terrace house or medium cost house, um, obviously there will be uh, bamboo might look more expensive. But if you look for, uh, if you're, the comparison is a boutique design, custom house, then I think we're quite competitive. Oh, I think in terms of a unique design, artistic, uh, work, yeah. Uh, bamboo design it can be more con competitive in terms of cost, yeah. Um, maybe we can say maybe more expensive, but you got something, uh, more artistic. Uh, okay. Um, okay, we go to the next. Uh, uh, we have quite many audience here. Okay, uh, Doctor Lo. Uh, are you still with us? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, actually, there, there are many uh, audience curious uh, with your your work. Yeah, actually, the first time I I hear this from you, I think a few years ago. Yeah, <laughs> I was yeah. so wow. <laughs> but but actually, um, it, it's quite same for us in architecture industry. You have been doing this for uh, twenty nine years. Yeah. And then oh. you got the stat the pattern also for this, yeah. But still, but frankly, uh, many people from architecture industry are uh, not really familiar with this, yeah. Oh. So okay, uh, this is a similar question I had before so when the first time I I saw this uh, system, yeah. Uh, the how to prevent geo uh, the the bamboo yeah from rotting mm. due to oh. moisture. Okay. Uh, can I answer now? Okay, now you yeah, see yeah, like this, uh, You see, uh, okay. You, I'm sure you have a lot, of, uh, a lot of Malaysian have experience. You know, bakau pa, bakau, uh, bakau. Mm. You know the the the, the bakau pa. When yeah, in the water, growth, under yeah? the water it won't rot. Under the water it won't rot. Above oh. the water it rot. Because okay. above water, they have plenty of supply of oxygen, right? And then you see, rotting of decay is a biological process. It's not like corrosion. Corrosion is a chemical process. It's a migration of ion. But, but I mean, decay or rotting is a biological process where you need a medium, a microorganism to carry out. Right? A microorganism is a living thing like Earth. It needs oxygen to survive and need oxygen to carry out the activity. So in other words, in the absence of oxygen, they cannot carry out the activity or very slow. So that's why it explains why below the water is aerobic and anaerobic above very very fast another example another example is you know human corpse huh? when when they pass away uh, when when a man die the corpse will decay in no time one year how come you have mommy right mommy also a corpse right so in other words it showed that when you wrap the corpse huh, very tight so tight that there's no oxygen right in contact right for the living organism to proceed with the decay then it will be preserved there Believe me, if a, if a mummy you open and then it will, it will rot in no time, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, this is the thing. So, all living things uh, all depend on the microorganism. Another I thing see, is, you I know, uh, so if you have bamboo under the water or this water, the, 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 that's why I told you the bagao pa below water rot very slow. It rot very slow, right? Oh, water very fast. So, similarly, and then 
as long as you dry out the air, either we deny the oxygen. For instance, now, I, I didn't show here, but uh, I have in the slide. Huh? The, 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 the Westerner, they study the Great Wall of China. They dug out the Great Wall of China to find that it's not pure earth. The Great Wall of China is not considered earth alone. Inside there, those days, our forefather already know about reinforcement, soil reinforcement, right? Mm -hmm. But those days don't have plastic and steel, right? 2,000 years ago. Huh? So they use, they use the, 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 the bamboo. They still find the bamboo inside the Great Wall of China since 2,700 years before. I mean, 700 years um, before Christ. So now, the thing is like this, explain it now. Because during construction of the Great Wall, in order to make it solid, they have to compact, compact very well. So when you compact, what you actually do is you dry, uh, dry out the air. You dry out the air, you mean dry out the oxygen. That's why the thing survives. So in I other see, words, uh, that how is the why, right? How okay. is the why the, yeah. the years thank, rather thank than... Thank you, uh, Dr. Law. I uh, think uh, it, it was the question from uh, Mr. Sebastian Yeo. I think uh, uh, it, it, it answered uh, your question, yeah, Mr. Sebastian. Uh, uh, can we, uh, because we are running out of time, uh, there are a few more questions here. Yeah, okay, from uh, Kwe Ching Chon. Chon, uh, a question to Dr. Law also. Yeah, does the bamboo needs to be treated and have special knots for this no, geo -bam? No. no. So first of all, we rely on the let's say the natural let's say the water as a preservative. And moreover, you see, because I was last time worked in FRI before, uh, those days they treat the timber power, the compass, compass timber power. They use a, a very poisonous chemical called CCA, copper chrome arsenic, because they're they because of the termite, the termite, right? The power. So they what they do is they they they, they impregnate half an inch or so around the timber pile so that the, the, the termite cannot attack, right? But now, and then don't, don't forget we are using hundred and thousand pieces, right? And then there is first of all, uh, it's gonna be expensive and time consuming to treat all the bamboo. Right? And secondly, this is not the this is not the issue. The issue is we we uh, uh even if you want to treat it, say. If I want to treat it, the department of environment will not allow it. Because you know why? If let's say when you say treat that the bamboo means one way or another, you treat with poison, with poison stuff, right? So the poison stuff, can you hundred thousand of pieces of bamboo in the in the ground? The groundwater will be contaminated or will be poisoned, right? And I'm sure the department of environment will not allow it. You know? There's no way you can ensure there's no leaching, right? The thing, let's say you impregnate it now with the poisonous chemical, so-called treated it, right? And then you put in the ground for years, right? For years. And then believe that there's no, le no leaching. That is not true. Right? Yeah, so on that ground, on that count, uh, the bamboo environment will not allow you to do that. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, so okay. And then uh, and the, the fact that I'm using in maybe supply base uh, 25 years, I only can believe that the things still survive. Uh. And then moreover, that's right now, I, the JKR job, uh, we instrument the, the strain gauges put on the bamboo to know what is the load induced in the bamboo. Then I tell JKR, by doing so, I mean, if let's say after many years, either the thing, no signal, there are two possibilities. One is the bamboo rot, right? Then the strain gauges ad adhere on it, just the, the mean, uh, I mean uh, remove, right? Or secondly, the thing, because there's not no, no adhesive huh, that you can put on the bamboo and ensure under such a hostile environment can last for 30 years, 40 years. Because the, 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 the ground condition is so hostile, right? right? So it could be the detachment of the string gauges. Mm. Uh, though, but now we are we are we are also watching, see how long the, the, the string gauges produce signal. Right? Very, very interesting. Yeah. That we never mm. we never thought that. We probably standing on a bamboo, a bamboo uh, geo -bam. Yeah, our building ah, now, ah. our road ah. now. Yeah, uh, ah. because it has been there uh, for twenty years, kind of twenty years ago. That ah. we never know that uh, we actually yeah. standing on that this uh, bamboo. Uh, the, the most striking one is the, the mine uh, system. Ah. Yeah, okay. The most striking okay, the, one is the 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 the, 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 the mine there because you play golf there. Wow, such a nice mellow, huh? very nice. Uh, but not knowing that underneath is actually all the expanding slime. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so audience here, yeah, bamboo is not actually uh, bamboo technology is not really something new in Malaysia. Yeah, we thought it is uh, just recently being popular 
Yeah, wow. but actually there is a quite amazing technology uh, Malaysia already invented uh, many years ago. Okay, the next question uh, again from uh, Sebastian Yeo. Yeah, compared to rap uh, pile, is geobam tile more cost effect and time effective to construct? And then another question, what species of bamboo is most sustainable for geobam tile? Yeah, well, so is there any specific species no. of bamboo okay. you use? And then roughly how much per square meter for geobam tile? Okay, so allow me to answer the first part. Huh? So yeah. now, to be honest, when uh, we are not particular about the bamboo species for a number of reasons. One, first is, to be honest, not many people know the name you know, bamboo. Right, especially scientific like uh, 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 bulo, uh, bulo, uh, but, uh, betong. Betong, uh. Do you know what scientific name is? Giganto Croa Scotty Chini. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> you, you don't expect orang asli or this, uh. <laughs> and, then, they know that, yeah. and, and nobody knows the species, honestly. honestly. <laughs> so, and then, secondly, and because Malaysia is very diverse, Malaysia, you walk into the Malaysian forest, one acre of forest, they contain 200 species of timber. You cannot find a species uh, that is of big, big proportion. Unlike like you say, you go to temperate country, uh, Douglas fir, the US, uh, you go to uh, forest, acres and acres of Douglas fir, but Malaysia is diverse. So if you're really particular about the bamboo species, I'm afraid you cannot do it, right? right? Uh, this is the reason. So we are rather focused on the physical and mechanical property rather than on the name. We are not particular about the name, but very particular about the property. Behavior. So for our design, what we do is we we don't care what the species is, but we test the bamboo exhaustive over the year. Then for design, we use the lowest. That means the chances of any time when you design, you pick a piece of bamboo, that piece of bamboo is higher than what your design strength. And this is how we uh, how an engineer uh, uh, cook with the let's say natural material, right? So, so we are not particular about species, but so come back to this one. So we are only particular about say a few criteria. First is maturity. Malaysian okay. bamboo three to four year matured. And when the bamboo is young, the moisture content is about 400%, three to 400%. When the bamboo get matured three to four year Malaysian bamboo, they set stable down to about 30 to 40%. Uh, so, but, yeah. And then That's because they matured, the strength is the tensile strength, especially. Yeah. Uh, Doctor, uh, maybe roughly uh, based on your experience, yeah. Uh, Regarding type of bamboo, yeah, or uh, mm -hmm. is it is it uh, did you use uh, do you use uh, often bamboo bamboo semantan, uh, bamboo no uh, we, 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 we because do, this we, commonly found in uh, Semenanjung and also Sabah Sarawak. Fair fair enough. We, what what we simply say we we don't care. Right? Well, we don't oh, care. you don't care lah. Like, uh, we don't yeah? care. We only <laughs> we only care about say first maturity because maturity have have a bearing on the strength. Right, okay. a young bamboo uh, because high moisture content, they are very very weak, very weak. And that's why so, orang asli uh, when they lost in the forest, uh, they suck the bam young bamboo because they have plenty of water. Huh? Oh. So you don't use young bamboo, yeah? How no, old no, no, bamboo no. Uh, uh, you use? Three to four years. Uh, three and then usually you, you you we, we judge by visual. And come back to just uh, the second question I say about the price, huh? So yeah, normally price. It's like this. Normally like this. Maybe ask uh, Mr. Sebastian uh, to call me because usually like this. We we will we will ask them the project give us your SP gal condition the SI report then we carry out primary design uh, then decide the spacing and decide the number of tier then we will come to uh, uh, the cost per unit area right and then again let's say if I were to build something in Johor uh, I will charge slightly higher because Johor do the bamboo I have to bring the bamboo all the way from Perak you know. Johor not because they are not suitable, because the land is is gold, you know, like slang off. Nobody will have a land idle, you know, uh, without doing anything. Their land, you know, it's only when your land is idling, then or uh, then the, the next thing is bamboo will strive there. So I don't oh, slang off okay. and Johor, but it's hard to find bamboo. I mean, empty land. I mean, uh, un unattended land, right? Maybe average a uh, price, doctor. Uh, <laughs> Every price, <laughs> uh, let's say uh, if it be based on certain spacing and the thing uh, is about uh, 50 to 70 ringgit per meter square. Okay, 50 to 70 uh, ringgit, ringgit per meter per square. Meter square. Mm. Definitely, then, it the, is cheaper than uh, the 
Para, uh, Raphael, Para, 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 Para. Para. And furthermore, uh, our our period completion very fast. Uh. Mm -hmm. Because in other words, let's say you, you see the, the one we have in the mangrove swamp. Uh. To, tomorrow you give me the job, I start straight away. <laughs> and then I get the platform for you, the three to four months. Right? Rather think... like, like surcharging, uh, let's say soft ground, they surcharge. Sometimes like as long as two years, you know, surcharging. Oh. <laughs> uh, the, 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 the West... Uh, West Coast Highway, mm. uh, IGM stretch. Yes, yes. It can be as long oh. as two years, and short as six months. And six okay. months, you do nothing there. You just leave it there. You see? Okay. And along, along Kampung, they don't understand what is surcharging. You see? They think the project is sick. You see? Because not a single person working on it. You see? And then the thing is standing there, but no one, even glass come out also, nobody attend to it. You see? Okay, okay. Okay, so uh, audience, uh... Any other question from audience? Yeah, maybe one more question before we end the session. But before we end the session, uh, uh, architect Adrianta from Pertubuhan Arkitek Malaysia uh, will um, mention something. Maybe to close this uh, lecture series. Yeah, for your information, we it, 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 to, uh, today uh, tonight is the seven week. Yeah, our last uh, lecture, bamboo lecture series. Yeah, so uh, audience, any more question? Mm. Okay, uh, seems uh, no more question. So I can call uh, architect Adrianta. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Thank you, Wawa. Thank you so much for Thank your you. great moderation tonight. <laughs> And <laughs> right on behalf of PAM Education Committee, uh, I will say to say thank you to all the viewers, and then thank you also to our speakers tonight. Yeah, uh, Engineer Dr. Lo, hi Dr. Lo, thank you so hi, much hi, hi. for your sharing tonight. Thank very, you, thank you, very thank informative. You. Yeah, and also to Jay, yeah, uh, I think Jay, I'm so proud of you. You managed to prove yourself that you have done a very wonderful experience here. I'm so proud of you. And to take opportunity to say thank you to, to all the speakers here. I think we conducted this uh, bamboo series uh, since uh, 16th of July. Uh, thank you to Dr. Architect Elena Jamil. And I believe our, uh, Engineer Major Ahmad Mazlan also here as one of the viewers <laughs> tonight. Thank you so much, Dr. Mazlan, yeah, for your, for your contribution here. And then we have also have a speaker from Indonesia, Widi Nogoro and also Irfan Adiwira and our Mr. Yeah. Ui all the way from Australia, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, thank you to the, to the moderator, yeah, Dr. Limpo and also Landscape uh, B, Jing, and also Wawa. Thank you so much thank for your you, time and you. contribution. You're welcome. So I also, yeah, I also want to say thank you to Mr. Mulo is, as a convener for this bamboo series of uh, talk. And I truly say that it will be informative to all our students, especially for the participants to the bamboo competition, which I can say in the schedule here, 30th August is the deadline for the work submission. Am I right, Muluk? Right. Yeah, 30th yes. August, yeah? yeah all right, so keep it up, a good job. Yeah, all right. Thank you so much, Wawa. Thank you to all the viewers. I hope you're enjoying all the series of bamboo. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, thank you also for supporting this event, uh, Pertubuhan Architect Malaysia. I think I uh, actually uh, one of the speakers before also here, Evan Adiwira. Yeah, I always say. All right. <laughs> we have also actually uh, Mr. Lucas Lu, yeah, uh, J Partner, the founder of uh, Seed uh, Built. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. So we are we are all uh, bamboo family, Malaysian. Bamboo family, maybe Nusantara bamboo family across Malaysia. Yes. <laughs> uh, thank you. I uh, truly appreciate Mencik uh, uh, Muluk, yeah, University Tunku Abdul Rahman and Pertubuhan Arkitek Malaysia to um, organize this bamboo talks. Uh, very inspiring, yeah. And then uh, hope we can inspire more people uh, to fall in love with bamboo, yeah. Uh, to uh, uh, Promote bamboo, yeah, more in Malaysia. Okay, uh, I think for 
uh, we can end this session. Yeah, uh, we can end this. Uh, yeah, Encik Melu, anything else? Uh, you are you you are very soft. Uh, can you take a group photograph before we end? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, that's very important thing. I almost forget. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Uh, audience, can you on your video? Okay. Uh, oh, hi, Lucas. <laughs> How's <Finally> people? It's <laughs> great. <laughs> Okay, we have architect Mel, engineer Maslan. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> my Pak Irfan pun ada sini ya? Oh, Kak oh. Yeah. All right, all right, okay. Uh, I have also my friend, landscape architect Jay Lee. Yeah, my Wonderful. colleague Sebastian Yeo. My Yo. boss, Mr. Tan. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, guys, you can on your video. We can see your beautiful face and mm. uh, Mulut can snap also. Uh, oh, All right. it's done? It's done? One, two, three. All right. It's not just for Once again, thank you, Dr. Lo. Uh, thank you, uh, Jay, uh, for very fruitful sharing tonight. Yeah, amazing information. Yeah, thank you so much. We are okay. truly grateful. So <laughs> see you again, everyone, you. in the next event. Right. Bye -bye. Be safe, everybody. Be bye -bye. safe. Bye -bye. See you. Thank you. Bye bye. bye. Take care. Bye. <laughs> Jay, 